How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and Tutorial Tuesday we're going to do an RPG Maker Envy tutorial for uh, enhanced lighting but a different uh, approach to enhanced lighting, a more updated lighting look on, on plugins this time. So uh, in this tutorial we're going to look at Thomas Edison plugin and also um, very briefly and the short way to, to use it as well as Terax lighting and how they can be used together. So what you're looking at here is a little example of uh, Terax lighting on the map so you can see that the player has a large uh, radius camera so it's like they're carrying a torch or something but the only other light source is coming from the campfire over there even though it's not lit but you can see the Terax lighting is working fine right here and it also works with uh, Tera with uh, Soul Power's uh, Thomas Edison plugin and you get some crazy interesting combos uh, when you combine Terax lighting with this uh, Thomas Edison plugin. I mean, look at this. Like, the Thomas Edison plugin draws the uh, spheres with opacity depending on lighting, uh, and then the Terax lighting basically does like the Pokemon style, make everything dark except for where the lights are and where the player radius is at. Um, usually, if you're using Terax lighting, I see most people using the player radius super small. But if I were to use Terax lighting, I would definitely want to have a large player radius. Uh, that way the player can actually see where they're going and the, the, the maps look like they're you know enhanced with special lighting effects but it's also not super dark and the player's not staring at a completely black screen um, so anyway you can see what it looks like with the Terax lighting I'm gonna jump uh, out of this project uh, into uh, or uh, you know I'm gonna close the program open the program but I'm gonna take off the Terax lighting to see what uh, Soul Power's uh, lightings look like without the, the Terax lighting so we can do that real quick all I gotta do to get rid of the Terax lighting is get rid of the event that's got the Terax note tag inside the event. So because I put light 350 of white here, it's going to make the whole map dark and then it's going to initialize like a light radius around this depending on the size, which I picked 350, as well as in the plugin parameters of Terax lighting, you'll have um, uh, a parameter that lets you control the player's uh, radius you know so anyway I have Terax lighting somewhere towards the bottom underneath all the Yanfly plugins here it is Terax lighting and if you want to control the player radius it's right there so this is uh, how how far the player can see and I've already gone through a few tutorials on Terax lighting um, so we're gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna just go over the method to to evoke it once you've got it set up and installed all you gotta do is do light then the, the size of the light you want, and then a, a hex color code, and that'll give you a, a colored light radius around that. Uh, as well as when that is on one of these events, is on the map, then the whole map will be sort of Pokemon cave styled, uh, blacked out. So let's cut this, uh, this map right here, and um, we'll paste it in our test map or something. Actually, we don't even need it anymore. Let's just save and play. <clears throat> so now we're going to look at just... Uh, Soul Powers uh, Thomas Edison plugin. So now you can see that it's, everything is not blacked out. And I left this map so that you can see it to tell the difference between when Terax lighting is there and Terax's lighting is not. With Terax lighting, you don't even see this far. So you won't see this down here in this area. You can put multiple maps on one map and kind of conceal them with Terax lighting and still have them kind of spaced kind of close. Uh, but uh, Thomas Edison plugin uh, works a little bit different when. Uh, Terax lighting's not around because you can see as you go away they don't really uh, turn into like pictures they still have their uh, opacity it doesn't affect their opacity also one thing I like to note is uh, you can customize all these colors um, these you're not you know you don't have to pick blue green yellow red I just went with those just as an example but you can use whatever color code you want to um, <clears throat> you know create your own colors and as far as the sizes you can pick those sizes too you see uh, let's start at the beginning uh, we have this little tiny small one and this is going to be our size a which can be customized as well this is our size B slightly bigger this is a size C this is size D and there's even a bigger one a size E that's pretty much the whole screen but um, yeah when you can put them together like right where they start to blend you get this interesting kind of color the same thing like right here when uh, this green and yellow starts to blend you get this really interesting color right here uh, this isn't uh, these over here aren't really big enough to start blending but you can imagine they would have a nice aqua color if this was the same size um, so the blending 
it, it really adds a lot to your maps. This is just a really, really bare bones example. But let's take a look at how you would add something like this really quickly. You get the plugins, uh, Terrax Lighting if you want it, and uh, Soul Power's um, Thomas Edison plugin. Uh, and once you put them inside the parameters, I put Thomas Edison below uh, Terrax Lighting, and it seems to work fine for me. <clears throat> But anyway, the Thomas Edison plugin lets you customize your default sizes right here. By default, it's one, two, four, six, eight. And I would just leave it like that because it works fine. Um, but you can adjust them further. So you can change the scale, the flicker, the full opacity of the lights. Uh, change all this up to your liking. Let's go ahead and drop it down a little bit more, less opacity right there. The flicker, you can change the flicker so that it kind of flickers in and out uh, more or less. And to actually call this, all you really need is a switch to control it. So let's look at the event right here. This is it. This is it. The whole event for the light. All, all it is is a comment. So you right click, you insert new, you go to tab one at the bottom, you click on uh, comment, not jump to label. <clears throat> Inside that comment, you're going to put in a capital word light. That's going to let this. Uh, that's the keyword it's looking for to uh, then look for the for uh, the rest of the arguments. The next thing we're going to put is a number that we want to use for the switch. So you saw how when I walked on this switch, it, it would turn on this one right here and, and vice versa. I would turn it off. So all I'm doing with this is a very, very simple uh, control switch thing. I'm doing a conditional statement that says if the switch is off and I just picked whatever number and called it uh, TE light one, TE light two and so forth. So if it's off, then we're going to control the switch to turn it on with an else handler if it's if it's not off otherwise if it's on then turn it off when it's set to trigger action button so if the player comes up here and hits this then if it's off it'll turn it on if it's on it'll turn it off and it's just like a, a switch you can put that on the wall make a button that does that or you could just uh, turn on switch 141 from the beginning or whatever switch you pick you know turn that switch on with your auto run uh, at the beginning and then all the lights will be on but you could also let the players toggle them if you wanted to <clears throat> But anyway, the next thing we're going to be looking at are the numbers that are in the brackets here. So this is red, green, blue, RGB, and then grayscale. Uh, so if you want it to, to be like kind of black and white, I guess you would put that to one or zero or something. But then you put true. So it's, if the switch is true, it's on. Uh, then you put capital A. For some reason, if you don't capitalize this last one, it doesn't work. Well, maybe just my version or whatever or some weird bug. Um, because with the lowercase, it doesn't work. So um, capital light, the number of the switch you're using, and then in the brackets, uh, color codes. And uh, we're not using hex, we're just using um, from negative 255 to 255, I think is how it works. Um, and then the last one is, is uh, grayscale. I think it's zero to 100. I'm not sure, but you could mess around with these numbers and get different stuff. And then you just say true. And then the, the letter you put right there won't always be A. It'll be A if you want that little tiny light. It'll be B if you want the bigger one, C if you want that one, or D if you want the, the bigger one. And like I said, in the parameters of the plugin, all you have to do is change them if you don't like where they're at. So you can say um, scale A is 2, scale B is 4, this is 8, that's 12, this is 16. It's going to be a giant lighthouse. I want it to cover the whole screen. You can. You can do that. You can totally do that. Um, but yeah, that's really it to do the Terrax lighting. I already went over it <clears throat> You um, you do the light and then the hex code the number and the hex code on the event to do the Terrax uh, I'm sorry to do the The Thomas Edison lighting you do a comment uh, Inside of an event with the with the keyword light then the number of the switch you want to use then the red green blue gray and then true and then the capital letter for the size that you want it to be and uh, that's pretty much it. I've changed up the opacity. Let's see if we can notice a difference uh, from 150 to 125 opacity. I don't think it'll be much of a difference, but oh yeah, there is actually. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit less intense, right? So you can change the intensity. You can still, you can see where you get like this overlapping, nice blend mode right there. It's kind of like a, a little exposed, but I, I think it when you mix two different lights together and, and they blend together really nice like that. Uh, you get some cool looking lights and it, it will really add a lot to your caves and your maps. Uh, one final thing I want to talk about is you can still use regular screen tinting and stuff like that to, um, to further enhance that. You can see I've got an auto run event um, that has an erase event 
which is just a simple uh, screen tint controller. It's all it does. And you can set your weather effects, set your whatever variables you want. This is just your map. Every time you enter this map, it's going to do this. So you wouldn't do your like global initialization of, initialization of all your variables on an erase event because it's going to initialize them every time you enter the map. The only exception would be if you start the game on this map and the player never goes back to that map, then it could work that way, but whatever. Um, this is for like smaller things like controlling weather and tent screen. So we're just doing a built-in tent screen to make everything a little bit darker. That way when we see the lights, they pop out a little bit more. Uh, and all I'm doing to make it a little bit darker is just bringing these down by a negative amount, a small amount. Just a consistent amount so it doesn't really change the color of the screen. We'll just set that to 10. So 100, or, or no, okay, so grayscale goes from 0 to 255. Right. Um, so 255 would be completely black and white, and zero would be completely colored. So if you want to desaturate it a little bit, you can add to the grayscale, and it'll desaturate it. If you want this to happen instantly, just set it to one frame, and do not check wait for completion. Otherwise, the game will freeze for a second until it's done doing its thing, uh, and then it, when it's done the, during the uh, loading the frames, uh, then it'll it'll give the player control again. But you don't want to lock up the game at all. So this is just one frame wait for completion. And a slight negative and uh, you can even do dark but I feel like that's too much I feel like that's way too much it looks way too blue and too dark so um, <clears throat> for night for nighttime anyway but anyway we'll go ahead and go like that and we'll just say five so that's our uh, control the the tent screen this these control the switches these are the lights themselves with a comment and then the Turax lighting uh, on like a, a torch or whatever and uh, all you need is one Turax lighting, like maybe on the door, and it'll make the whole map kind of like black on the, around the edges so that you can't see like stuff like that far away. Uh, also, it changes the way that these look slightly so that they, when you're farther away from them, they don't look, uh, they look more like a, a solid color because the background behind it becomes a solid color, a black color. So that's how it works. But anyway, you guys play around with these uh, plugins and add some more dynamic lighting to your map. It'll really help add that atmosphere kind of uh, ambient kind of feel to it, you know. So play around with lighting. I really encourage you guys to, to put uh, Soul Powers plugin, Tarax lighting on it, use your own screen tints, um, and just mess around with your own custom colors and, and try to find interesting looking combinations of lights for like altars and and shrines and and uh, that's one thing that I, I really miss in a lot of games is is lighting it need there needs to be better lighting in a lot of games and hopefully uh this quick tutorial gives you guys some example of how you can easily make some lighting in your game and uh we didn't have to go through and learn every bit of the help file. We just learned a method and apply that method. Very, very simple. Only take you a few minutes and you can make your maps look way, way more professional and better. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting me on Patreon. Everybody who is backing me on Patreon, I love you guys. I really, really appreciate all the support you guys are giving me. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got RPG Maker Envy tutorials, Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials. I do first impressions videos. I look at other people's video games. I do quality assurance. I do beta testing. Whatever kind of contract job I can get my hands on, I try it. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.